What's up? We're talking American Gods Season 3, Episode 3. My name is Carrie Lane. I'm joined by my awesome co-host this way. We got Flobo in the house. Man, I'm always backwards with the, the pointing. But it, I hope it's this like is a right. mirror, so it's so like, <laughs> hold on, where am I? Yeah, so glad to be here. Let's talk about American Gods. I, dare I say my favorite episode of the season so far? Things were happening left and right. I was just going to ask, so now we're on to episode three. How are you feeling now? Because it was a bit of a slow start. Oh, yeah. What are you thinking now? Slow start was an understatement, Gary. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, we at least got an A plot, a B plot, and a C plot, and that was keep. It kept on going, kept on juggling. Sometimes in the same scene, we saw things go back and forth. So mm-hmm. it was kind of rewarding us for tuning in this season after having those slow two episodes. But now we're seeing more stakes than this beyond the war between the old gods and new gods. Thank the Lord or Lords, <laughs> that's happening. Thank the gods. I, yeah, thank you, God. Because I, I last week I was a little frustrated. I was like, you know what? what what's this season going to be about? But now I have all the tendrils I need. Yeah, it definitely had a lot more going on. It was definitely more interesting and some humor. Uh, we get our flashback in the past, um, episode three, Ashes and Demons. Uh, we get 1765 West Pennsylvania, the rituals of the ancients. And so we get to see essentially a early Demeter, which was cool because we meet her later, which I really did love. Yeah. Um, so speaking of that relationship, we get Wednesday and Cordelia. Okay, not only is he essentially homophobic, he is definitely sexist, which I mean, I, we knew that, but it's like, yeah. Yeah. man, give your Cordelia some dues. She is working her butt off for you and you are ungrateful. <laughs> She did the worst thing that I hate doing is getting gas in it before a road trip. I'm always like, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> but she did it herself. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, totally thankless. Yeah. So I remember last week I wasn't sure if even though if, if fiance was a code name, if there was a sexual element. I'm I don't think more, so. Yeah. Now I, I'm pretty much sure it's definitely like an arrangement yeah. as far as you help yes. me to help you. Yeah. Um, something that we saw as like a ooh and a preview for next time. So we know there's going to be something with it, but I really thought it was weird that moment where the four band members died, that there's a homicide and that was the band that he was interacting with. And I'm like, what? So that was yeah. cool to call back from a previous episode. I really want to know where that's going. Cause that oh, was absolutely. like, it, to me, it was kind of like cheap. He was like, I'll deal with that later. Basically, look at the camera and be like, I'll deal with that episode seven. I promise. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll be back. Is... Tune in for next week. <laughs> exactly. Wink. Um, <laughs> but, you know, one of the cool things that we always asked about about the old gods was, you know, if these people don't know this exists, how are they worshiping? And so we saw that early in the season with the, the giant rock concert. So mm-hmm. I can imagine with so many Spotify streams, that's how Wednesday gets his energy, sure. I guess, day to day to day out. So, of course, there's going to be some retribution. Hopefully, we get that giant like God of Thunder scene like we did in season one at that Easter episode, my favorite episode of the show. Uh, but yeah, it was kind of interesting. They pot that seed for our later payoff. Yeah, I'm really curious to see where that goes on. And yeah, poor Cordelia doing everything she can. And even like question, in the car. Claire, do, you, do you know how to work a steamer? Because I don't. I have never. Yes. There, <laughs> well, uh, from working on short films and uh... like indie films, they have steamers on set. Uh, also with my clothes, I, I, I never really used to care about ironing clothes, but now I'm like, okay, I lo- I don't like my t-shirts to be totally, I don't fold them all so amazing. So they look very wrinkly when I grab uh, them. I'm the worst of um, yeah. cool. <laughs> so I'm like, I will totally be okay ironing. I don't care. But certain things I will try to steam it because especially if it's like a fabric, you can't, you can't like sure. iron it. So I feel it on her. It's, it's actually really easy. You're just like literally like me you know, going over in. it. Props quickly. Yeah. Yes, but it takes time. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, so what did you think about Demeter hanging out at essentially a old folks home slash psych ward? Because it kind of seemed to be a hybrid of both-ish. Yeah. Um, I was, I, I, for, for me, it kind of really makes sense of it is, as she says later, it is a place for her to truly be herself and I mean, I feel she would pick up on the sarcasm of the staff going, sure, you're a goddess. And that would just, right. like, you know, rub you the wrong way. But right. she said more of the other patients or the people that are like, yes, you are. I, I'm glad you brought this up because this is actually one of the arguments that, that Demeter and, and Lindsay had where I saw both sides. You know, if, if, mm-hmm. I, if yeah. I truly believe that I am a goddess, uh, 
even though you may be in a weird kind of like a uh, greenhouse situation the mm -hmm. fact that people are actually acknowledging us that is kind of helpful it's the methadone if you will but then when wednesday goes yeah but if you said you were the lizard king they're totally th call you that too i go yeah he's right this is definitely like a fantasy simulation and i really think deep down that she wants to go but she wants to make sure she's not putting herself in a weaker state she's not she'd rather have the, the fake false kind of like uh, appreciation than to go outside so. of nothing so it's safe like there's you know it's shelter and food and protection it's not yeah. like the unpredictable world outside so yeah no right. i get both sides um one thing actually I, I just saw my notes here um do you think cordelia fully understands that wednesday is a god because he said something about the year and then she's like oh i thought you meant this year uh and changed it and how she's kind of like yeah sure you're gods and then i was like oh does she not know because is she like shadow like yeah yeah sure you're a god i don't think she knows or at oh. least hasn't like fully had it sunk in that that date exchange is open to interpretation. Mm -hmm. I I interpreted it as her just saying, "Look, man, I make sure you didn't make an ass of yourself or make a mistake on this forgery by getting mm -hmm. the year wrong." But you're right; it could go either way, and it, it hasn't been determined either way. It would be surprising if Cordelia was like, "Oh my gosh, I didn't realize that," because she's driven as far as she could with Betty. There's got to be some kind of inkling, no? You would think, but it might be one of those people deal with a lot and just go yeah whatever and like you know shrug it off so that's me yeah <laughs> we'll see i i'm really curious if we'll get something later about that um so we had pretty much yeah she doesn't want to leave and be herself wants to be herself and she comments it comments is comments how wednesday is old and desperate but what is he desperate for i was like ooh. Girl, she's like, mm hmm. I'm all you called it. There is something. What is he like? She, I think some of the older gods too, they just want to survive. They, so the extra effort that he's doing, they're just like, ugh, why? Bro, yeah. yeah. uh, you know, it's one of those things that w it's the audience surrogate question of the year. Look, we all seen these gods, and I guess you spent more time with the old gods, so you want to see them win against mm -hmm. the new gods, but what are they fighting for? Do we yeah. want to go back to the days of doing blood sacrifices for Ofnir? I'm not so sure. So yeah, yeah. I'm glad someone took Wednesday to task and be like, what are you doing this for? Yeah. And I felt she was delightful. I really liked the slap at the initial, like, no. And also calling him out on his BS, like, okay, are you actually here? I'll go with you if you tell me the truth. Are you actually here for me or for my money? Yeah. No one wants to see Wednesday, ever. Nobody wants, no one's ever like, Wednesday, except for tear. Everyone um, is like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just so bad to Here's see. Here's the only yeah. one who's like, what's up, buddy? But everybody else <laughs> hey, is like, you know, what do you want? Yeah, well, what do you want? They've no, learned. You're absolutely right. I think it's, it's cool that Demeter is like, even though she's in a mental state and she's diminished, isn't diminished enough to be like, ah, smell yeah. BS. Also, I loved her crafts activity that she was doing with the other people and that straw um transformation at the beginning of the episode i had a jaw drop like oh that looks so cool like the woman's making the offering and it's the straw doll and it takes shape and grows and becomes this beautiful woman i was like that was Mwah. like the special effects and how they visualize that just looks so stunning what did you think of that transformation Two weeks in a row, and I'm creeped out as hell. I, it was a straw doll, but it was like, it was weird. It was twisty. It was like, oh, it's going yeah. to happen. Could have been a horror thing because it was a book of spells. Didn't expect that to be the good answer to the answer to the famine. But I was like, if she gets herself killed, I'd be like, bro, that's who you have <laughs> using that creepy book. <laughs> but well, I was it had like the no face, and then it was like the little bit of a lady's face, and then kept going. I'm like, yeah, same. At the beginning, I'm like, this is going a different, where is this going? <laughs> I was concerned <laughs> for her. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, um, but they, yeah, effects so good. Um, oh, agreed, yeah. I was gonna say, speaking of effects, we get a lot of effects with Dead Wife, uh, Laura Moon at the elevator and Purgatory. And I like that we had characters specifically say we're in Purgatory because it is one of those like, but where are we? Right. Uh, what did you think of that whole chunk with Laura in Purgatory? So it's a it's a weird thing for me because, well, for I was in the impression that my parents are a Protestant that 
purgatory is kind of like you know, a Catholic thing, right? But I never had interpreted it as this hurtling subway car to the sky with so many straps to hang like, off of. Ah! Different races or religions are all together. Yeah. Just be like, ah, you know, that, that was terrifying, but not as terrifying as the straw doll. I would ride purgatory to ride if I had a chance. Uh, but you know what? I'm glad we saw a little bit more of Laura. Uh, we'll get to her and her, her interpretation of things a little later. But she was kind of insufferable. But I think I would be too if I was hurling through time and space up to a ring in the sky. Well, it's definitely... It's it's peculiar in the way of I guess that is so many people because they're all going to purgatory because we've already seen other people die and get essentially a one on one with whatever god slash religion they care about so it's kind of like well why are these people all together but it's because they're going through purgatory or going to purgatory kind of depends on how where you're going yeah because um, yeah that's her fair because big... she's been a zombie for like what a year year and a half. Right? <laughs> How did you like her thing was pretty much you need to acknowledge reality. Okay. So, it, again, I it's one of those things that if I were in Laura's place, I would knock her for doing what she did. You know, I've seen my life. I cringe when I see my old YouTube <laughs> videos, I let alone things I'm actually a part of. But watching it as a fan, I'm like, look, lady, they're trying to tell you something. Yeah. Just chill out. <laughs> you know, what is wrong with you? Like, uh, sit was, down, shut up. Yeah, yeah, you know, like that's exactly what they were saying. Shut down and shut up. But I thought it was a cool way of saying of how many times things happen in our lives and we get to maybe blame ourselves or we say something mm -hmm. I could have done, but then having someone tell you it's not your fault, it was a cool way that it was on Laura's decision to see the skewed truth and then get seen the truth. Yes. Oh, yeah, no, I, I thought the purgatory scene was such a cool, or scenes, the section was really cool of a waiting room place. And I'm going to link it down below. I made a short film called Pending, and I'm like, this looks really familiar. And I shared it with Flobo, and I was yeah. like, this looks really familiar. <laughs> I was like, those thieves. <laughs> they were like, totally ah. on YouTube, like, yeah. Mm. <laughs> so I'll leave a comment down below. So go check yeah. out that short film, everyone. We um, expect yeah. payment of two special guests, at least. In yes. the next <laughs> <couple of laughs> yeah. But yeah, just a visual idea of a waiting room, which has been done in other mediums, but the way this one is, is very particular to mine of like, it's a line, it's different people from different eras, different races, religions and everything. So that was like really cool to see it as like, almost like a train um, station. Like they're all kind of waiting. There's like the main desk and everything. Yeah. And of course, Laura's like, get me the fuck out of here. And um, the crazy hallway. And I like that it doesn't really respond to her because she cheated and right. it could have just done anything, but I like that it was like, no. And also the door that eventually turned into what hers had and it changed the numbers is all the bug spray, like kill it, the pesticide that she used to kill herself. So I thought that was such a great, like it, it felt like a never ending hell purgatory, you know? I mean, yeah. we'll, we'll go both on that one. If it's just like, it just keeps looping. And she's like, how do I get out of here? Did and I say she got off easy? Like, a if, little if I, bit. If I yeah. was ready to go to purgatory and someone just jacks my ticket, all they get is the bug spray like visualization is messed up. Yeah. Now that person's stuck waiting for even longer. Yes. Uh, I agree. Because she got very, very easy and just has like the the theater room. I did like both of those characters. It was so cute. And they were funny. And I, I liked her getting to see her life and learning. I was like, where is that? Yeah. Uh, I you... was tripped out the fact that it was a VHS tape and VHS. A film at the same time. Like, which one is it? <laughs> yeah. Both. They exist simultaneously in this Fair. world. But I like that she went into the world, too. But it, and as you said, it's such a good example of how we see our lives one way. But that's because it's our viewpoint. It's not an objective viewpoint. It's not someone else's viewpoint. So maybe you saw it not as it is. Um, and pointing out why are you still so angry? Because that's true. Like, this girl has not let go of anger the entire time that we've known her. She's always been upset. And it is like, what, like, what are, and I don't think she could pinpoint it per se, sure. herself. Yeah. Um, but I love that moment of, like, you're not the architect of all of your fuck-ups in your life. Uh, and Unless you're not responsible life. for that. You're like, okay, good life lesson there. And a little bit of a sort of remorse for Shadow. A little quick little, yeah. oh, oh, I'm sorry. It's like, oh, hey. <laughs> no. Yeah, and like she felt bad about him and how she messed that up. Um, so I do, I do like that she maybe accepted reality a little bit and she's not, 
I mean, it's, and I agree, similar to our conversation with Demeter of like seeing both sides, I see both sides of this of like one feeling like you are not responsible for your life because all these bad things happen to you. But then also that negates the idea of you should also be able to try to overcome those or not be stuck on that because yeah. this happened to you. So it's like, it's cool. one of those things, yeah, like your your trials and tribulations forge you the person who you are, but you can't dwell mm -hmm. on them, even though they make you who you are. Like, it's like what you're saying. And I think this is a perfect example of this. I mean, I can, I was with Laura's interpretation of what happened until I was like, wait, she just said she wanted to watch cartoons and, and dad went anyway? Okay, mm -hmm. that's weird, you know? And then seeing what really happened, I go, oh, I get it. It was totally a crap my style, kid. <laughs> you know, I'm going yeah. down the hall, so... Yeah. No, so it's and it's sad that and then also as a young or even adult, like if you don't understand something that's going on, obviously you wouldn't remember it correctly because you didn't know what was going on. So yeah. it's like, of course you'd interpret it incorrectly. I um, so I'm really curious. All the time. Right? You're just like, wait, I didn't understand that. Or you get to hear <laughs> the other side, and then you're like, oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> One time, I like I bumped into somebody, and for years, I was like, I can't believe I stepped in their shoes, and. And I, I called him up, like, hey, let's go out and get something to eat. And I told him the story, and he goes, I don't remember this. And I was like, really? My entire life, I've been sitting there going, <gasps> you yeah. know. Or that, yeah. It's something that's monumentally important to you, and then, or vice versa. It's huge to them, and then you're like, I don't know. Like, I, I had a conversation the other day of, like, a family trip something, and someone pointed out, yeah, they had this big fight. And I'm like, they did? This yeah. happened? Where was I? That was a loud there. You know, it's like, wait, what? And then I'm like, do we even remember what they're I'm like, I don't even remember. And I'm like, that's not part of my memory of it. But, you know, I bet I didn't ask them of like, so. <laughs> right. Here's uh, what I'm going that? right now. What yeah. Guys on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, then we have, that's pretty much everything with Laura. I'm really curious to see where uh, we're going to go with her next. Like, what what is next for her? Also, preview for next time, I think we saw Mad Sweeney. So I'm like, ooh, maybe something. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, um, it has to be now. It's been, what, three episodes since yeah. we've seen him? So I hope something yeah. happens next week. Right. I know. Uh, we Bad also wife. have... Sorry, what? Think Bad wife, dead wife. <laughs> yes, dead wife. Uh, we have Shadow. And also, I think it was with... It was with Laura scenes and Shadow scene. Huge love of the crossfade slash match on action shots where it's somebody happening in this scene and then it kind of continues into the next scene is different. Yeah. I'm like, ah, it's Yeah, so the good. search party, the Thunderbird like feathers. Yeah, because again, we've seen it all all season. It's in the opening sequence. There's something going on with mm -hmm. crows and Thunderbirds and what that means. But yes. yeah, we got a, a weekly dose with that search party. Yes, I think I think Odin's are ravens so. though. True, they are ravens. But, but yeah. I figure like the whole. But yes, AVR the Thunderbird. Thing. We yeah. still have more yeah. there. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, and then yeah, sorry. It's also the crossfades with Wednesday's stuff that's going on. So that was just such cool, like film, film little you know cherry on top. Like they don't have to do that, but it just looks yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we have Anne Marie, bless her heart, just trying to be so helpful. And I'm Is just she like, though? oh. You Is know, she? I'm very suspicious of her. I'm glad you said that. Me too. I'm like, you know, she's being a little too nice, too helpful, and taking over Chad. Also, I think I didn't have his name down last time as much. I was just like, yeah, the sheriff. And I'm like, he is a Chad, a little bit. Um, <laughs> a little bit what did you think of that apology to Shadow? Where I'm like, all right, I get that it's an awkward topic. But if you really felt like you meant no harm, you wouldn't feel that awkward to apologize. That is very deep. Uh, what I was going to say, I, I enjoyed it for two reasons. And and one, Shadow let him basically hung himself out to dry. Because he could have jumped in, but he was like, like, continue. Yeah. And then when he said Lake Side's not like this, he goes, well, is Lake Side still in America? And he was like, oh, snap. I was like, you get him, Shadow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you can't take that back. You can't take it back. I'm going to a town that was so warm the day before, and I'm going to get some pasties, and I was looking like I killed somebody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, 100%. I'm glad he called him out on it in, indirectly. Because, yeah, if you really meant nothing, you would just be like, oh, my gosh, that was such a weird mistake. My bad. I am sorry. Uh, I hope you understand that's my job. Boom. Not this. Yeah. Well, you know, because... Like I, I'm like white and 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 you're like black and oh my gosh this is super awkward and uh, uh and you're just like wow yeah 
I, I was sitting there just like Shadow going, mm -hmm, Go mm -hmm. ahead. Continue. continue. Yeah. <laughs> what did you do wrong? Please tell me. <laughs> what was it? Yeah. Yes. Um, I think a job. lesser show. I think a lesser show if it was on like broadcast TV would have cut that. It would have been like, no, oh, it don't was worry so about it. It was just like timely. drawn out just to be like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And super timely. I love that of this good point of like, I hope you're aware, sir, that you are a white cop talking to a black man and you thought he was the murderer just because. Just because he's from out of town? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that, that's the only reason. Yeah. Sure. Where are the other black people um, in this town? <laughs> yeah. And Marjorie, I think you had mentioned her name before. Marguerite. So that's our yeah. Marguerite. Marjorie. Marguerite. <laughs> I think was that I felt the sheriff was calling her Marjorie, like as okay. pet oh, name. She's, she's, she's Marguerite, but that's what I thought I heard. But, but it could be a mispronunciation, yeah. On his well, no, it might be Margaret, but it might be calling Marjorie uh. short. I don't know. Gotcha. That's a good question. Let what did you chat. hear? Leave Could, comments. I heard Mar Marguerite, but if the chat hears something Marguerite. else. I heard Marguerite, yes. Okay, yeah. Um, have you noticed that they said that there was multiple burglaries? You know, I'm like, this is really suspicious that there's been multiple bur burglaries in this small town. Yeah. Uh, that feels weird. Okay, we learn that Leon is her son and he's alive, but she referred to him as my youngest. Right. If you had one child, you wouldn't say my youngest. Absolutely. So I still think her other child um, died or went missing. Now that she was so concerned about someone going missing, I'm wondering Correct. if her other child went missing. I think exactly what happened. I, I, it is interesting how Leanne kind of appeared, and it makes you wonder if it was like a writer's choice to say, let me use oh. that so I can say my youngest and, and what have you. Or mm -hmm. this character himself and Leon will be important to the story. But yeah, the fact he came in and was like, ah, I thought you hit this guy. It was like, like he was hanging around the entire time. We never saw you before, Leon, but you're hanging out like we were a main character. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then also we see him. The, I feel there's going to be more with Shadow and the uh, newspapers from town. And it had that there was a little bit as he was starting to fall asleep about a missing boy, I think. Mm -hmm. So. I feel that ties into her son. So hopefully we'll learn more and maybe that ties into what's going on. And yeah, that's a good question is, is the girl missing? Is Allison missing part of the gods and supernatural stuff going on? Or is it just um, a regular standard human psycho person? You know, it's like, yeah. we'll see. Well, uh, one last question, Kara. Do you think she's yeah. dead? Because of, of what the paper said, the newspaper said I tried touching. Well, she's been, if it's if it's a human, yes. If a regular human goder, yes. If it is one of the gods, I think they might be keeping her alive because they saw shadow somehow. No shadow interacted with her. Is my theory. What about mm, you? I like it. No, I think I think uh, I was going to write her off as being passed away until Shadow tried touching the paper. And it changed to saying yes. bloody blanket. It's and I was like, mm, bloody, maybe. no, bloody scarf. Sorry, bloody, bloody scarf. scarf yeah. There's no blankets out in the wintertime. Yes, bloody, yeah. bloody scarf. But when I saw that, I was like, why would that, why would it change to say that if she's not dead? Right. Yes. So, it was yeah. super weird and suspicious. And I was like, oh, I was so glad he tried it too. I was like, oh, Shadow, you need to test out your powers. And he, he just needed to give it a little bit more time. I so mean, this there's is, no instruction manual. So poor guy. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, you know, you, did something and you're like it didn't work done and you're like no dude like give it a minute breathe breathe <laughs> but so I, like me <laughs> no like i'm dancing too, I, over turn it. the computer on and i'm like it's not turning on should i turn it on and off again uh, <laughs> i think for him now we're seeing a more uh, a continuation that his power is something like tapping into the energy around him and the world uh, actually, just actually, j I hadn't thought of it before just now. Uh, if anybody watches his dark materials, he's essentially tapping into the dust. Uh, mm -hmm. It's essentially tapping into the particles, uh, the matter that is around us, and it speaks. And so it's speaking to him this way. And it's Ooh. kind of a similar idea because it's like, who who is he talking to? Like, who who is responding in that? Because if it is essentially like the universe or like right. energy around him, that makes sense. Because otherwise you're like, well, who's replying? Right. It's a Ouija board. No one yeah. knows. Yes. <laughs> and then you <laughs> don't know who's it. replying. Don't do it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, then at that time leads us to our other big character uh, point was he has his dream, has the vision, and Bilquist calls out to him, uh, which was cool. Because it was like, oh, in that fridge. I was curious. <laughs> I was like, he wanted to go. 
Yeah. Hey, so man, check out was, the ladies. It was a yeah. whole punk group in there. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> it's a concert um, just for me. Yeah. Something I was thinking about, and I wonder if anybody else watching has you can have we has this happened, touched upon, it, or have you thought about? So he's interesting because we have the gods who are generally related to a very particular area, like they are related to where they are from, where they originated from. But Shadow is half made from a Norse god and his mom, and I'm like, so is he connected to African gods? And right slash are they aware of him because we see in this vision of the like grocery store it's all these african magazines and women and women that's a good point that's women but i don't know if that's built with like this time it was but um what are your thoughts on that of like his identity essentially well again i have not read the book so i'm not sure if this is answered in said book but that's something i felt like there was the little nuggets of that because much like how we have uh people of different races here in this country, there was that their concepts of, of, of biracialism or one drop rule or colorism that you are black, no matter how much black is within you, if that makes sense. I sorry if I'm being crass. <clears throat> so I kind of assume there will be some sort of either an African American or an American God derived from African spirits, mm -hmm. which is why I saw like what well, made sense that Nancy was part of the story in last season, even though for whatever reason, I'm not going to get into it, why Nancy's not here in this season. So I thought it was interesting that we saw like the Jets and the Ebony magazines and, and the Nigerian travel magazines all calling foreshadow using an African goddess in Bilqua's Queen Sheba. Mm -hmm. I think there's something there, but I'm not sure what the interpretation of Shadow's mom was going to, is, is even going to manifest at all uh, in the modern seasons. Yeah, I, I'm curious if they'll get into it more because he and Bilqua's had a connection. Um, and I don't know if that's just because of who they are as individuals or because of like their ancestry of like where they're from, essentially. I'd be curious to see where we go with that. Um, speaking of Bilquist, we have her crying and she's not doing well. I still think it is like she's been poisoned by that toxic guy. Um, there is a cell phone and all these messages, which goes back to that idea that the people who came to see her probably settled all their life stuff because she gets these messages like, Grandpa, where are you? And like a spouse and then somebody else. And I think yeah. that was also bothering her. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. Last week, I was like, what's her deal? You know, but yeah, what is it to eat with Bilquis? Uh, but yeah, this definitely was a different kind of sacrifice. They were seeing the fallout. Now, I'm I'm sure there's not many people that, that Bilquis would have cried over in any of the circumstances, but this was definitely like a sacrifice that was used as a weapon, not so much mm -hmm. of receiving an offering, and that's something that she has to work with. But of course, the knock on the door and the wire cutters. Uh, Ooh, that was intense. I was just just like who is breaking into her place i just thought that was like crazy um we find uh one I, side note pivot on that so we find what's going on is a uh, shadow calling wednesday finding out where bilquis is and wanting help and wednesday was so excited that shadow called him but she's like give me information okay bye <laughs> yeah see that's why you shouldn't have kids man sometimes they may not like you <laughs> he said and he said that too he's like a, a thorn nothing hurts more than a child scored something like disrespectful child Serpent's fight, yeah, all that. Uh, He'll get over it. Yeah. And then Shadow is able to get to Belquest and finds a very wounded, something wrong, glitchy with technical boy. I think, I I want to say he didn't do it. Um, I But who did it, though, is such a big question. Because I don't think any of the old gods or new gods want to hurt her. So I'm curious if it is somebody uh, connected to the guy who was a problem for her or if it's somebody else we haven't even considered yet. Who do you think it is? So going into season three, I would say, yeah, that, that what happened to Bilquis, well, allegedly, because the, the, the force entry and all that yeah. uh, does, is not the MO of anybody. I mean, it does seem weird. It, it's kind of interesting that Tentacle Boy will come back and feel any kind of remorse if he was guilty, which I'm not saying he is. But can I say this? We don't know to the extent of this new Ms. world. I mean, she seems a lot more vicious. She's a lot more violent as far as episode one. I don't think she's been ruled out. I would say mm. with you, Karen, that there's many people that wouldn't do it, but I don't think Ms. World has been ruled out. I don't really, because I kind of thought, like, they want to bring her onto their team that they wouldn't, nobody from the New Gods group would want to hurt her. Um, but the question is, did they hurt her or just kidnap her? Kidnap her. But then, 
I was yeah. a kid that because Miss World was like, "You're being, you're taking too long, technical boy. What are you doing?" <laughs> that that's a good point. Like maybe she was like, "You're taking too long." But then who would have gotten in the fight with technical boy that he's injured? Because it we saw that weapon, which is a really cool Peacock fan weapon. Yeah, uh, fabulous. Yeah, it's like phew, and like, phew. Yeah. and uh, I like that it said glitching on the subtitles. And so I wonder if like he got hit in the temple and it's just messing with him. So I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, um, so many questions there for sure. Uh, he he's kidnapped other people before and has a history of this, but I don't think he's been one for and he has been one for violence, but not necessarily himself. Right. Like he's had the like faceless minions do it. Right. So I'm curious how he got involved that he's bleeding, you know, and so. having a bad day on top of that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like oh, but it's- not really. Yeah. I know everything is just gets kind of like pushed aside and it's like a, a Russian roulette or a three card month. You have storylines, but I really hope this one gets answered next week. I really do. Oh, I hope so too. Cause it's like, Hey, let's get answers for this one. Cause there's so many questions on it, but it's like, mm, what, what's mm-hmm. going on? Yes. Uh, was there anything else in the episode we didn't touch upon that stood out to you or what happened? I, I, the one note that I'm not sure it's going to pay off or just kind of, for this purpose was uh larry hutchinson the uh the conservator of the of the mental health uh hospital uh, he basically is representing half oh. of the patients and i wonder if he's going to come back to to play at any point in time or just kind of like a a one-time kind of obstacle for this episode that's the one thing i was like mm, that's what you're about yeah that is an interesting point because could he come back and i like that wednesday was suspicious of him that this guy owns stuff and has takes care of people but i'm like are there other gods there? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. are there some other aging ones that like, also if you are a god and you lost touch, you really even of who you are or a, a extra identity and then you, that's where you would end up. Right. right. Maybe. Yeah. Good questions. We don't know. Leave your thoughts down below and let us know. Oh, here's a question for me if you're watching this in the chat. Are, are those uh, disposable cameras actually get developed film? I don't think so. I think they're going to be intercepted. But let me know what you guys think. Ah. You oh, we went past it, and I, I I missed my pun of we get to see Demeter in her heyday. I don't get it. Demeter at the beginning, it's the little thing. Oh, the hay! Oh, I am slow. Sorry, I went to school in Brooklyn. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Give it up again. We're way past that moment, but I had <laughs> thought about it ahead of time. I'm like, yeah, we see Demeter in her heyday. That makes sense. <laughs> and I was like, duh, what do you mean? Because <laughs> she's like the goddess of the crops. I mean, she's not literally hay, but, you know, like the oh, little. Man. It looks more like it's um corn husks. Because yeah. it's in a cornfield. But still, I was like. I just had myself a square moment. I apologize. <laughs> That's right. Do I get a round of applause? Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Give her a hand. Is that right? <laughs> a seal of approval? <laughs> Summer camp. I was like, what were the other ones? Uh, yeah, those are a couple. Anyway. Um, <laughs> well, uh, I think that covers it on the episode. Uh, any other final thoughts? I am on board 100%. The first two episodes, yeah. especially episode one, I was like, oh, here we go with the war again. But yeah. now I have enough mysteries to keep me interested. Can't see what episode four is all about. Can't wait to see. Agree. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Alrighty. Where can people find you? There we go. Where can people find you online? Oh, yeah. You can follow me at Flopo Boys on Twitter and Instagram, at Flopito and Instagram, flopito.com. That's F L O B I T O.com. And if you want to see all the shows that I'm hosting, NewAmsterdam.com, K-N-E-W, Amsterdam.com. Nice. Yay. And y'all can find me. Here. There we go. It's over here. Again, as we said, it's like a mirror thing. So yeah, it's it, a mirror thing. Yay. Oh, there it is. Yes. Uh, on Carrie D. Lane and Twitter and Instagram. Just finished up a uh, covering episode of Sword Art Online. Had voice actor guests. So go check that out also on this channel. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. Also on Instagram. I'm going to be doing an unboxing, so go check that out. Going to be eating some Japanese candy, so and snacks. Yay! Go yeah. check that out. Yay! Well, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Leave your comments down below what you thought of the episode and anything that stood out to you. And we'll talk again next week. Thank you, Flobo, for joining me. It was super fun. Thanks for the invite. Yes. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye.